This is the oral representation of our paper, Domain Invariant Stereo Matching Network. For stereo matching, training data with accurate depth ground truths are always hard to collect. This makes it hard to train the accurate stereo matching networks. Moreover, the pre-trained models on one specific dataset are hard to generalize to other novel things. As illustrated in this fig, the state-of-the-art GANET trained with synthetic data produced poor results when we test it on the real KT dataset. Self-supervised method can solve the training data problem, since it requires no ground truth. But the self-supervised approach still requires the access to a large amount of stereo pairs from the target scene which are not always available in the real-world application. On the other hand, these self-supervised models have poor accuracy, as illustrated in this fig. It cannot handle the occlusions, reflections, and the textureless regions. So our target is to train the stereo matching models on one domain and then generalize to other new domains without fine training or retraining, especially training on synthetic data and generalize to real scenes, since synthetic data are easy to generate with accurate ground truth steps. State of the art stereo matching networks cannot generalize well to new domain without training or adaptation. This is caused by the significant domain difference, including the image level style or color difference, the local variations and contrasts, the local texture, details, noise conditions, and finally the other complicated domain differences. In the ideal conditions, there is no domain shift between different datasets of scenes. The outputs of the pre-trained models will not be changed. But in practice, domain shifts are widely existed. The effects of these domain shifts can be approximated by the second equation. In this formulation, Alpha i and beta i represent the shifts of an image level styles or colors. Pixels in an image have the same alpha i and beta i. Alpha p is the local variations or contrast. For example, the lighting conditions is varying in different regions of an image. Pixels of an image may have different alpha p. And the bad P represents the local details or noise conditions. Bad P is also varying for different pixels in an image. Finally, we use function phi to represent any other uncommon domain difference, which may be hard to formulate using specific models. These four types of domain differences can significantly change the behaviors of the pre-trained model. As illustrated in this fig, when we train the model on the synthetic scene flow dataset and tested it on the real KT dataset, the learned feature will have many noise and artifacts. These are caused by the domain difference between the synthetic data and the real data. And these artifacts and noise in the feature maps will lead to many wrong matching results. To address the challenges of the domain shift, we develop our domain environment stereo matching networks, which includes the end-to-end -end learnable domain normalization layer that can normalize at both image level and pixel level, and the non-local graph-based filtering layer that can capture non-local structure and shapes as matching features. Let's focus on the domain normalization layer. The widely used batch normalization cannot handle the image level domain variations. Instance normalization can remove the image level scale difference, but it cannot handle the domain sensitive local variations and contrast. Our domain normalization can normalize the feature at both image level and the pixel level.
In our domain normalization, we normalize the features at image level, which is the same as the instance normalization. We also normalize at the pixel-wise feature vectors. This essential pixel-wise normalization helps make the model more robust to domain-sensitive local variations and contrast. This fig shows the distribution of the feature vectors in different datasets. We use the L2 norm to visualize the distribution. Influenced by the local contrast, namely alpha p in this domain shift function. We find that the instance normalization cannot handle these local or pixel wise variations. While our domain normalization can align the feature vector very well in different datasets. We also develop a non local graph based filtering layer to handle the domain shifts. We build an 8 connected graph for each image. Then we split it into two directed graphs to avoid loops. Our non-local structure preserving filtering layer is defined as a weighted mean filter on the graph. The weights are defined according to the path between different nodes, which is similar to the traditional geodesic filter. The filtering layer is end-to-end -end trendable and can be implemented by propagation on the graph in a linear time complexity. The node-by-node -node propagations start from the top to bottom and from the left to right over the whole image. As illustrated in this page, the graph-based filtering layer can help learn structure and shape information as matching features. It can make the model more robust to the domain-sensitive local details and noise shifts. Moreover, it can also reduce the influence of other uncommon domain difference. This is the network architecture. We use the domain normalization layer to replace the original batch normalization and use several non-local filtering layers for feature extraction. This is the error rates information by evaluating on different datasets in a cross-domain setting. We can observe that our DSMNet is far better than any other zero matching networks for the cross domain evaluation. It also outperforms the traditional zero matching method, including the widely used SGM. We compare our model with state of the art zero matching networks. Models are trained only with synthetic data and tested on the real Middlebury and cityscape datasets. Our DSMNet can achieve far better depth results than state-of-the-art models. We also evaluate our DSMNet on the KT benchmark. We find that DSMNet is far better than existing self-supervised models. It even outperforms some fine-tuned models like the DisparityNet and the MCCNN. The fine-tuned DSMNet achieves a similar accuracy as the state-of-the-art models. It doesn't sacrifice the accuracy to improve the generalization abilities. Compared with the models trained on the real dataset, our DSMNet trained with synthetic data can produce more accurate object boundary. This is because synthetic data have more accurate depth labels. This is a simple video demo captured using the Cityscape dataset. The cityscape dataset doesn't have depth labels for training, so models are trained only with synthetic data. We compare our DSMNet with the popular traditional semi-global matching and the state-of-the-art GANet. DSMNet is far better than the in the real driving scene test. It can produce accurate depth results in the object boundaries, occlusions, and the large root areas. The source code are now available on the GitHub. Thanks for your attention.